Happy Friday. It is almost the weekend. I'm super stoked. Couldn't ask for better weather. And I am so excited about the content that we are going to be talking about today. The kind of front and center of everyone's mind in the lending world right now is rates and programs and how do you make things cash flow. And so I am so excited to have Willie here with us today to talk about this incredible new investor flex tiered lending program he has that is going to be really transformative for our model and for as rates continue to drop and things start to you know stabilize more in the lending world a great refinance product so really excited to have him here today uh, we're going to have an upcoming virtual mastermind on may 1st this is a small group in-depth really deep dive into your portfolio, your situation, using our proprietary tracking software and spreadsheets and analytics in a small group environment. And so this is a wonderful way to look at your portfolio and have us talk to you through what we think you should do, how you can build it, how you can start on that path to building the massive portfolio like Michael and I did so many years ago. And this is a great way to learn from other like-minded investors and both their successes and failures and see what they're doing and how other people are in a similar boat to what you are trying to decide what makes the most sense. So this is limited to a small group. This is one-on-one -on -one with Michael and me. We would love to have you there. It's a few hours and this will be on May 1st. If this is something that you are interested in, you can reach out to Eric or you can email us or go to the website to get more information or to register. We have an incredible webinar series upcoming over the next two months, and I'm not going to go through all these if you've been watching. I've been talking about these and, and my excitement of all the things to come, but certainly if you haven't registered for these, make sure you go over to our social media. You can go to slaughterinvesting.com, or of course, you can always reach out to us, info at slaughterinvesting.com, or use the QR codes. We have three upcoming property tours that are regular property tours, March 1st, a weekend on March 23rd, and then April 5th. These run 10 to 4, learn about the model, the markets we're in, and see what's happening in these markets and the incredible off-market new construction opportunities that OmniKey Realty has for you. And then, of course, we're continuing our weekly property tours days. Uh, if you watched yesterday at either 12 or 8, you saw some incredible property options. And next week, we're going to have a whole new batch for you, again, at 12 and 8 o'clock Central. You can register here or on social or on the website. Very excited about our spring fling. I feel like it's right around the corner, two months away. We've got our big charter bus tour on the 26th. I will be there on the 27th. We have the big spring mixer at our home. This is family friendly. It's going to be a great time ending with a fireworks show. And then on the 28th, we're going to have an in-person mastermind, just like the virtual one, but this will be an in-person half day event. Again, limited to a small group. If you're interested, you can reach out and we can get you the registration and information on that. We had our first in-person bite of real estate meetup. It was wonderful. We've got our next one coming up on the 27th for those of you that are here local near DFW. That will be from 1130 to 1230 at Kelly's at the Village Craft Tavern in Allen. No cost to attend. There's no sales pitch. There's no education. It is just speaking with like-minded people and enjoying conversation about real estate. Michael and I will both be there along with all of our teams. If you haven't joined our mailing list to stay up to date on all the types of things I just spoke about, I definitely encourage you to do so. This is where you're going to find information on our mastermind consult calls, in-person appearances, and keep up to date on all the things that we are offering, just like the webinar today that was added at the last minute because of this incredible new program. If you weren't on that list, you wouldn't have known about it. Before I begin, everything that we're going to talk about today is based on my best years of experience and judgment based on running and operating a real estate investment property management company and an investment portfolio myself. As I always say, I am one tool in your toolbox and my goal is to connect you with like-minded individuals to help you develop your investment model of what's going to be the best fit for you. Willie is absolutely one of those tools and I am so thankful to have him as a part of our team and our coaching program. I do want to make clear that not every model is going to work for everybody and while we believe our model is the best one out there, all investment in real estate can potentially be subject to loss of capital invested. So very important that you do your due diligence, not only on who you're speaking with, but also the model that you are using, the market you are investing in, and also your own financial benefits. And so very important that you speak with those around you who can help guide you to form your investment journey. We are happy and thankful to be part of that journey for you and always love to connect you with other people who can help you on your way. 
We have some incredible new market data coming out, not only for DFW, but also Grayson County. So I'm gonna give you just a quick update on this in case you missed my property tours days yesterday. January, 2024 numbers just came out on Grayson County and absolutely amazing. Median home price is up almost 11 and a half percent since January of 2023. Not at all surprised. We know the strength of this area. We love what's happening here and we are just getting started. Closed sales are up over 12% and market share of affordable housing 200,000 to 299 is still only 31 percent absolutely incredible love the investment opportunity in Grayson in addition to that Grayson College is getting some incredible upgrades they just put in for their 450 million dollar proposal they'll have a new residence hall campus renovations a health sciences building and new classrooms of course why are they doing this preparing for the people to come and the jobs that they have to train people to fill exactly the things that we've been talking about we expected to see love seeing this money pump and into the area. And of course, all the people coming in means traffic. And what does North Texas do better than anyone I've ever seen? Stay ahead of traffic patterns. And so the 75 expansion next phase of development on the road is starting February 12th. It just began a $196 million project to widen it from four lanes to six. They're adding frontage roads. This will can be completed in about three years. Absolutely exciting stuff. Love seeing all the growth. Now let's talk for a minute about the unique opportunity right now, because one of the reasons that we are constantly looking for the best ways to make properties cash flow and have great lendability is because of the unique opportunity that is presented right here, right now, not just because of North Texas being so strong, but the unique subset of the market that we deal in with the high growth and this incredible housing shortage. Nationwide, the United States is short between 2.3 and 6.5 million housing units estimated. Let's talk about why this is happening. Number one, almost half of all construction companies folded during the Great Recession, and this is truly when the housing crisis started to get to extremes. We've been building too few homes for almost 50 years, especially in the entry-level housing market, but we still have not recovered what we have lost from 2007 to 2012. There's an 80% drop in construction between the peak of 2005 quarter three and through 2009 quarter one. It's also gotten a lot more expensive to build real estate. Anyone who's living in the world right now under understands the big impact of rising costs of all goods. And of course, real estate is no exception to that rule. It's about 30 to 40% more expensive in the post COVID world to build than what it was before in 2019. And so of course, this raises the price of homes and also changes the number of homes that people are building. Interest rates have, of course, played a role. You can look at 2021 where rates were sub 3% and now we're closer to 7%. But the real problem is people are not moving. People have more equity than ever before in history on their homes, and yet 61% of mortgages are under 4% and 89% of mortgages are under 6%. And so people are not going to move. People are not going to let their houses foreclose and go back because it is quite literally nowhere else that they can be cheaper. In addition to that, the demographics are changing. People are living longer than they have in previous generations, and there are a lot more people continuing to live alone. People are living longer, they are healthier, and so they are not having to go into group living facilities. So when you look at the median age of the U.S. population, you can see how much this has continued to rise. In addition to that, on the right, you can see the percentage of one-person households has gone just absolutely crazy. 30% of people now live alone as opposed to in the 1940s where just over 7% did. So in addition to population growth, we are also seeing more people still living on their own at an older age. And this is of course on top of the fact that Texas has more children that are gonna be aging into adulthood and ready to rent and buy properties than any other state in the union. Finally, we have a ton of homes that are lost every year. We have 100,000 to 250,000 homes that are lost every year between natural disasters, fires, and properties that just can't be lived in anymore because they're uninhabitable. All of these things add up to create this incredible housing shortage and the crisis that we are currently seeing. And DFW is the front and center of this because of so many things, but most importantly, population growth. DFW is growing 300% faster than the typical US population, and we are up 26% since 2010 absolutely incredible. The U.S. population in retrospect is up only seven and a half percent. 
Our workforce has grown 30% since 2013, and we are still and have been the fastest growing job metro in the U.S. since the COVID pandemic. We were the first to recover. We were the first to hit 110% of pre-pandemic employment, and yet still here we are with this incredible affordability of our market for a top four, soon to be top three market. We still have only 2.6 months of inventory DFW wide. Average monthly rent is still only 1347 and our unemployment rate remains at under three and a half percent. Absolutely incredible. And this speaks to both the resiliency and the strength of North Texas. So all of that said, what should we be doing? Buying real estate. Certainly I put my money where my mouth is. Every week I come and talk to you about why you should be doing the same. And so I'm very excited. Anytime we have a new program that makes this more accessible, more cash positive, and more advantageous for others to do the same. So Willie, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate everything that you do for me and for my clients and have done for many years. And certainly we are very excited about this new program that you've put together for us. Awesome. Thank you very much for having me on. And I love working with you and all your all your referrals. You're one of the few people, I think, who truly gets what we do and takes that to educate the clients from a lending perspective in every decision they make. I hear consistently from clients how much time you spend with them, how much you dive into what their goals are and what they're trying to do and the transformative difference that you make for them in building their portfolio. So I thank you for being a part of the team and taking that so seriously. For those of you who don't know about my husband and I, we both are middle school sweethearts. We started working in real estate at 18 and we have a master a $40 million real estate portfolio. We own many businesses. All of them revolve around real estate, real estate repairs and rentals. We speak all over the U.S. teaching others how they can do the same. And I've been doing that and speaking on stages for thousands since I was 20 years old. We're both born and raised here in DFW. We have been blessed enough to see not only the incredible growth of the area, but see the potential and the changes that have and continue to happen here. Uh, we really have been just so excited to see what's been going on here. And I hope that you can tell from for those of you that have been listening to me at least how much I absolutely love the market I love real estate I love the power of what it does and certainly the power of what it has done for me and my family and those people who matter to me uh, I want Willie if you'll just take one moment and tell everyone a little bit about yourself if any of our clients or people listening today haven't heard you speak before you are a powerhouse of knowledge and understanding of not only the lending world but the trends and really is what to come and what's come in the past and so tell us a little bit about your experience and a little bit about your bank too I've been in the industry for 22 years. I've been in management, underwriting, compliance, various sales and account executive positions. I've just been extremely fortunate to sit on many seats on the mortgage bus and uh, come to the bank and run in the mortgage group. You, you wear a bunch of hats and uh, it's one of the benefits of, of being able to do what we do. Um, I handle everything from investors, first time home buyers, purchases, construction, cash out. We do kind of the the whole nine yards. The the unique thing about the bank, and this is one of the things that really separates Third Coast Bank from other community banks, is they hired a salesperson to run their mortgage department. Um, I came in with heavy sales ability. Usually the people that run a mortgage group are um, underwriters or risk assessors. They're not letting the salesperson kind of draw out the entire roadmap of what the department's going to look like and how we operate. So it makes us really unique with with our approach because really it's just common sense portfolio products we use common sense underwriting if we do fanny freddy you know you got to fit those requirements to be able to sell those loans but we're able to kind of handle it from portfolio all the way up to you know fanny freddy and just pick the best product for the client and it just gives us a lot more opportunity utilizing both ends you know, one of the things we talk a lot about is that handhold family owned and operated experience. And so the companies that we work with, the people we work with, we really try to do that with everyone. From a lending perspective, that's very hard. So although we can find great people to work with people, uh, it's very difficult on the servicing side, on the changing product side, on the compliance side, because we don't do Fannie Mae. We don't talk a lot about Fannie Mae, certainly not right now. And so finding a bank that is going to write their product and stand behind their product, service their product with either a company they work in hand with, 
but hold that loan is just so incredibly difficult. And, you know, everything that we do is to build the number of the portfolio up. So although someone may not be outside of Fannie Mae right now, very quickly with us, if they're following the model, they are. And so it's so important that we have a direct bank to build a relationship with because we're playing the long game, that long term picture. And I love Third Coast and everything that you do, keeping that in mind. You know, you did my personal home. You guys have done my vacation homes. You do my guidance line, my build lines, all of my investments. And so even for someone at my level and my volume to have one place that I can partner with that's going to stand behind what they write and hold it themselves and handle situations, it's really incredible. And, you know, we even had a, a thing this week where I had an issue and you jumped right in. You got it resolved and it wasn't your fault. It wasn't my fault. It was just one of those things. And it's the customer service that you guys stand behind that is so incredible. And that is why we partner with companies just like you. And it's just, it's fantastic. And I know the clients love it too. Yeah, it's it's really fun. And just having, like I said, we wear a bunch of hats. Um, oftentimes I'll speak with the clients and I take that initial conversation and I kind of pre underwrite it on the front end. And most places you're not going to talk to somebody that can underwrite the file on the front end. So um, it just makes it really unique with uh, the opportunities that we have here. It really is. It really is. So I'm so thankful we found you guys. A funny story. I actually had a bank very similar to Third Coast we were working with for many years. And the individual that I had been working with that I had followed from bank to bank left that bank because they basically in COVID said, OK, we're done writing investments which obviously that was when all of us in the investment world were buying more than ever. And so my friend left, went to third coast, called me and it's like, all right, well, I know if you're there, this is exactly where we want to be. And what a great move. What an incredible move from the banking products you guys have, the interest rates that you pay on your bank accounts to the loan products, to the servicing, to the relationship. It's just, it's great. So um, I sound like a broken record, but guys, they really are that incredible. I promise. Awesome. 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 So what we're going to focus on today first is understanding what DSCR loans are, because this is not something we talk about a lot. I mention it briefly when I do the big overview of the model, but I don't talk about these a lot because they have been too expensive to be talking about. We're going to talk about the benefits of Investor Flex, this program offering that Willie has, and then we're going to break down the four plans that are part of this Investor Flex. And so uh, first and foremost, let's talk about what a DSCR loan is for those who haven't heard of that before or maybe haven't done one before. So what a DSCR loan program is, is a program that looks more at the property and the debt coverage of that property, instead of looking so closely as what you are from not only a perspective of your credit, your income, your tax returns, your longevity at employment, really what DSCR is caring about more than anything is what is the actual expenses of the property and what are the rents. Now, that's not to say that personal qualification doesn't play a role, and that's a misconception. There are some DSCR programs that look solely at the property. But I want you to remember the more information a bank has on you or a program has on you, the better those terms are going to be for you because the more comfortable they're going to be of your ability, your willingness, and your desire to repay. So Willie, talk to me a little bit about DSCR lending in general and where you see it utilized over Fannie Mae. Really, it's the uh, probably heavy investors or self-employed borrowers who have really good CPAs that don't necessarily show a lot of profit. When, when they're looking to acquire investment properties, we typically, we need those income documents to ensure that everything budgets. When they don't, DSCR is a great product because really all it's looking at, is like you said, it's the monthly rent divided by the, the payment. And as long as it cash flows, it, it's good. So it, it, it takes a lot of the income qualifications out of it and makes it more of a streamlined product just to get from start to finish. You don't really provide the majority of the traditional documentation that's needed for a Fannie Mae loan. One of the things I love about DSCR is the misconception that it's for people who can't qualify for regular lending. There absolutely is a place in the market for that. But in reality, people like me, people like our clients, where we use DSCR is to get on a 30-year fixed product or a product that acts like a 30-year amortizing fixed type product 
without having the 10 door limitation of Fannie Mae and all the strict requirements of Fannie Mae. And so when rates were really low, people like me were locking and closing everything we could on refinances on DSCR to lock into those low rates because we wanted to fix them for a long period. And so there's a lot of different ways to use DSCR and its flexibility is one of the things I really like about it. But because there's less documentation, it often has a higher interest rate. And so in an already high rate climate, we've kind of backed off DSCR. And also a lot of the DSCR providers have really high upfront fees. And Willie, one of the things I was so excited about for the program when you called me about this was not only are your fees not high, the rates are great, especially in the climate we're in right now. And so I think people are going to be very excited to hear uh, about what these programs are. So really what we're talking about here is evaluating you as a borrower based on potential income of the property, looking at your financial health, specifically as it pertains to real estate, and really have criteria that's aimed at you as an investor rather than you as a home buyer. When we talk about Fannie Mae, these are government-sponsored, government-backed loans. We call them conventional loans. So if you hear conventional, you hear Fannie Mae, that's the same thing. And there's strict guidelines because it has to meet across everyone. And so they're really looking at you as to whether or not you're a risk when you're buying a home to live in or to have as a rental property. And so that strict criteria is aimed at mortgages needed in that residential housing market. And the terms and the requirements have really been shaped in the post 2007 to 2010 crash world. And so it's very strict. They're very limited to cash out at 75%. If you're doing two to four unit, you have to put 25% minimum down. Of course, when COVID hit, the CARES Act applied to those conventional mortgages when my DSCR loans didn't have a lot of those requirements. And so one of the things that we don't like about Fannie Mae is the control, that government feel of control and requirement that, you know, it's kind of like once you've opened that door in COVID and they've walked through it and they've seen that they have that power, it brings me pause as to whether or not they would potentially do that again if there were to be another type of crisis. And hopefully, you know, we've all learned our lesson and we're not going to let that happen again. But that is one of my big fears of conventional lending and its limitation of 10 doors, which depending on where you start with us really depends on how quickly you're going to get there. So that difficulty with Fannie Mae, we're talking about occupancy requirements, those strict qualification, those loan limits and down payment requirements we're talking about, conditional requirements, the stringent appraisal process and how long they take to turn around these loans because they are selling them off. They're packaging them up to sell off to an investor. If you've never seen The Big Short, great movie to watch, explains a lot of how these processes work. And so it's not a bank writing a product they are comfortable with to hold. Very, very different different situation. So again, that DSCR type product, whoever you're working with is tailored to investors. It has better potential for you to be able to have different terms and different down payments and different amortizations and fixed periods. And it's extremely streamlined. There is an investor backing it, but it's very simple investor guidelines that you are fitting to. So again, DSCR can be very streamlined, very quick. It's very focused on cash flow, especially with a lot of the very unique options you're going to learn about today. Whereas Fannie Mae is your traditional conventional mortgage application that can often be very difficult to qualify for, especially as a business owner. And the emphasis is on your personal income and personal credit history. So. Let's talk a little bit about eligibility criteria. We've talked about property cash flow. Of course, there's still an appraisal. And of course, there's this DSCR minimum. And so this is going to be a lot of what we focus on today. So obviously, my preference is DSCR loans when they're affordable. And I'm very excited to have a DSCR loan now to bring to you that I can comfortably say is affordable. So when you're talking to lenders about what they're looking for for DSCR loans, the questions you want to ask are what criteria do you require? What pay paperwork do you require? What are your program terms? Specifically, what are the points and the fees on it? Because I have heard some crazy ones. Accessibility to the product, what are the qualifications for that product? And then do you do it on residential single family? Does it have to be a package? Some DSCR lenders require five or 10 minimum at a time, maybe a minimum of a million dollars. So lots of different things. And so lenders are gonna differ based on their requirements that they're looking for, including that DSCR threshold, 
what type of collateral they're willing to do and what they're looking for for you as a borrower, not only from your experience, but also the pricing. And so some of them are going to have fixed rate loans. Some will have adjustable. Some have different LTVs. Some have different paybacks, balloons, and prepayment penalties are very common in DSCR. I've seen two-year prepay, five-year prepay. Often you could take a longer prepay, get a lower rate. So this is the uniqueness of DSCR, all the things that you can manipulate to change the pricing and the programs of what are being offered. And so I want you to remember, when you're working with a lender like Willie, someone who is someone you could pick up the phone and call, they're going to be responsible for it for the long term. You're finding a lender that really is going to be available and know your specific situation and be able to guide you individually. That's very different than walking into your big box bank that you maybe have your operating bank account with where you're just a number or very different than using a mortgage broker or someone who when you close is done with you and out of the picture. And so you want to make sure you know the terms of what you're going into. You've reviewed all those fees. You compare the offerings from different lenders and make sure your lender understands and is focused on your goals. And I'll take that a step further and say, if you're following our two to six year model, I want you to make sure they understand the model so that they can help you achieve it and make it happen. As opposed to what traditional lenders do is they sell you a product and the only way that they continue to make money is when you refinance. Very, very centrally different from what we actually do. So all of that being said, we've done that legwork. Willie's program checks all the boxes and and this is our preferred DSCR lender. So Willie, your turn, take it away. Talk to us about Investor Flex. Okay, yeah, so one, one of the things that uh, we really pride ourselves on is, is our in-house portfolio loans. And there came a time where our rates were just a lot better than what we could do on any other option. And this is one particular product with the, um, the, the DSCR where the pricing actually started becoming attractive and it wasn't too far off from what we were offering. And then it just kind of opened up to a better option. Now we can do, you know, more options to present for uh, long-term financing. So whether it's an adjustable rate or a 30 year fix utilizing DSCR, it just kind of opens it up. The, the rates with DSCR, they're not far off from where a full document uh, loan would go and full document is like all the financial, you know, tax returns, pay stubs, W2, DNA samples, you know, the whole nine yards. You, you can get there and get the same rate. It just, maybe the fee is just a little bit higher or the rates a half percent lower, quarter percent lower. And when you have complications going that full doc, DSCR being right within uh, reach of where the full doc loan rates are, it just, it, it's a great option to get from point A to point B and we can utilize it quite a bit. The favorite question is, you know, what y'all's rate today? And it's like, well, depending on the product, credit score, purchase price, you know, down payment, debt ratios, you know, how many properties you have, uh, you, you need almost all that information just to price out a loan. And the pricing is just the first aspect of it. We're going to review everything and present those options, whether it's a fixed rate or adjustable DSCR. We'll, we'll pick the path of least resistance. If we've got some hurdles that we can clear and get you a better rate and better program, we're going to utilize what we can. But the rates aren't far off from where a full doc loan is. So it's pretty awesome right now. The the thing that's pretty cool about it, Investor Flex is it, it's, it's not tailored to just like a 200000 price point. They, uh, they allow up to $3 million. Um, there's reserve requirements um, and things of that nature, but it's it, it's for jumbo as well. It's not limited to just a very small product. A lot of the price points that we see on the two units or single family, um, the the DSCR is just you know kind of teed up for a great product to utilize. So one one of the things that's pretty awesome on our uh, Investor Flex products is for, from an industry that they typically want to see strong debt service coverage ratios. Um, strong is two or more, meaning the rent double covers whatever the, the actual service is. Most lenders are 1.2 or higher on their debt service coverage ratio requirements. And with, with our product, we do have some that require one or higher, um, but a lot of them don't have any DSCR requirements. Yeah, and it's really surprising because this is where one of the problems is in today's world is the DSCR requirement they're looking for is very, very hard to achieve with a high LTV. And so it really is just fantastic that your DSCR is so reasonable that we can make it work on traditional rentals. That's one of the things that we look at. And, it, and there are some scenarios where 
when when Lee and I were talking about this initially, she's like, ah, I've been burned on some DSCR. You got to know there's like a fork in the road. If that appraisal comes in and the market rent is low, like if that happens, you may shift programs because your DSCR um, is under a threshold. That's where it creates additional down. So on ours, we look at it, a lot of them, they don't even have a minimum DSCR. So we start off from the get go. We're not really concerned about it because it doesn't play a factor. The the investor flex, the, the thing that's awesome on, on their stuff is it's 30 year fixed rate. There are adjustable rate programs out there, but they price out worse, if not the same as a fixed rate. So typically on DSCR, you're only going to be looking at 30 year uh, mortgages. I do have an investor that has a 40 year uh, amortization. We may utilize that in some scenarios. Um, if we're trying to get lower payments, they also allow interest only on investment DSCR. So there's uh, some flexibility that we have in utilizing. If down the road things shift, then you may see lower rates on adjustable rate. But right now, really, everything that we see on DSCR are 30-year or 40-year fixed rates. Just looking at the products, um, being able to do an amortization for 40 years, that may drop the payment just enough to where things need to be. Um, without having to put more money into it or paying extra fees to get the rates lower. If adjustable rates uh, become attractive, there's seven, six, and five, six hybrid um, loans that we can do. So those are 30 year amortized. The rate would only be fixed for seven or five years, and then it would just semi annually moving forward. We're able to look at all of these on the front end to determine what's going to be the best rate. Do we even look at adjustable rates or do we just strictly go with fixed rates? And remember, with our model where you're selling properties every two to six years, it's almost it pretty much never happens. People following the model that they're going to own a home long enough that that adjustable rate is going to hit. So, you know, one of the great things about a 40 year option and interest only option is it increases your cash flow because a longer amortization from 30 to 40 decreases the principal part of your payment every month and interest only gets rid of the principal part completely. So there's a lot of options here for people that are really trying to fixate on cash flow. And I'm not a fan of doing that in a market that's not appreciating or in a linear market where, you know, property values remain stable over a 10 year period. But in a market like North Texas, it really presents some unique opportunities for much higher cash flow potential and so very excited about those options as well and the thing i love about this program you've got is that it really works on everything we do it works on single family on duplexes on the small multifamily. it it really is extremely diverse in what it can apply to we've had a few scenarios where we just added the interest only feature and that lowered the payment about a hundred bucks versus the client putting an additional five percent down um, to hit that same payment. So the interest only came in as a lifesaver where they didn't have to come out of pocket that extra money. That's just awesome. And I love that this is available for foreign nationals too, non-permanent residents, and that you have programs that have no income or employment verification. I know a lot of people I send to you, they don't work, but they have a lot of cash, a lot of savings. And so this is a great opportunity for someone in a situation like that. Yeah, and uh, we, we run across uh, quite a few investors that fall into this category. They're they're strong. They just don't have the, you know, I'm doing a little Austin Power finger quotations here. <laughs> they don't have the paperwork um, that's going to be needed to satisfy a full doc loan. So it, it makes it easy where it just bypasses the majority of the documentation that's required. So let's talk about qualifying for this program. When someone contacts you and they're interested in the investor flex, what does that look like? Yeah, so um, when when you say, hey, I need an investor flex program, the first question I'm going to ask is, why do you think you need an investor flex program? And that kind of opens up the conversation. Um, if, if you know up front that you've got a good business with good cash flow, but you just you don't show a profit, it, it won't take long to determine like, OK, well, this is our outlet. This is what we need to do. Here's the requirements. Um, reserves. Um, I want to know price point. How much do you want to put down? Is there a target payment you're trying to reach and that's why you're putting that much down? Or is there like a pro forma that you're following and you're, you're trying to hit certain features? Um, we get the structure pretty much ironed out from the get go. That way we know what our reserves are. Um, a lot of the DSCRs have reserve requirements. Um, however many properties you own, whatever the principal and interest taxes and insurance are for those properties, you tally them up and then multiply them by, you know, three to have a three month requirement. If some programs re require six or 12 months or none, uh, we go over that on the front end. So we know which one we fit in. 
um, make sure we identify the number of finance properties, um, discuss credit score. They allow um, down to 660. Um, most DSCRs we see are, are really A paper customers. They're high credit scores, just got a ton of assets and are there's some, unfortunately have some really good CPA, so you don't see the money on the uh, tax return. Um, good mortgage pay history is, is a must. Uh, a lot of these programs will allow a 30 day late one time. Um, other than that, it's zero times 30. Um, the, the programs are broken down by color and they have a few different features that really kind of separates them. Um, um, we'll go into each of these and part of this is, is what I do on my end once we take the application or we, we kind of get enough information to gauge what, what the, the structure of the loan is going to be like, pull up pricing, and then just make sure that we can still satisfy the requirements. So uh, Investor Flex isn't um, only a program that's built around people with large down payments. You can do um, a, a standard uh, down payment for an investment property is 20%. You can do Investor Flex programs with 20% down. 20% still carries quite a bit of risk um, because there's not a ton of equity in it. So with 20% down, you can expect to see a little bit higher rate on that versus a scenario that's putting you know 40% down. The, the Investor Flex programs do not carry minimum loan amounts. So um, if it's a smaller investment property, um, it's not like you have to have a, a loan amount of you know 200 or 150 or 100. They are pretty much wide open across the board. And, and again, this is stuff that we look at on the front end when we're discussing uh, options and programs. We're having to input the information um, input the reserves because some programs have 12 months reserves, other only have three. So when we're going over pricing, we're making sure we're going over the correct program at the beginning that you should uh, qualify for. That way we're not looking at a surprise because you only have three months per property, not six, and we tried to go that direction. And just to be clear, I always recommend that you keep six months of payments in reserves per property minimum. So Investor Flexes, the, uh, we're, we're going to pull credit. We're going to take a look. It's a tri merge, so we're going to have all three credit reports. Um, this, these programs will show up on your credit when credit's pulled because it's an individual, it's a consumer loan. Um, credit score is key. Um, it's a key factor in how the rates are priced. Probably if you're sub 680, some of the overlays in the DSCR programs are going to hurt you, the pricing overlays, and they're going to make the rates really, really high. Um, so the, the credit score, when we look at, if you're really 680 plus, um, you're probably going to be able to utilize the program. If you're sub 680, you may not be able to utilize the program, but certain conditions with a down payment and a lower credit score. So low down payment of 20% and the low credit score, DSCR just may not be the program that prices out the best. When, uh, they look at mortgage pay history, they'll allow a one times 30 late over a 12 month period. So when we're looking at mortgage lates, I typically do not see uh, many borrowers in this category, but in the event that you have a 30 day late, it doesn't uh, shoot you in the foot and prevent you from being able to utilize the program. So another cool feature with uh, these programs is um, we're eligible uh, to close in the name of an LLC. So uh, most uh, commercial loans, you close on a 20 year, 25 year amortization. They have a balloon feature. The rates are fixed for you know three years and then they reset. Um, we're able to utilize and close in the name of an LLC. And again, if uh, your credit's pulled, these loans will show up, but if the LLC is eligible, then uh, you're able to actually close on a 30 year fixed rate in the name of an LLC. For borrowers who are wanting to amass um, uh, some rentals, uh, this product works for first time home buyers. Um, if the properties are in an area that's short-term rental considered uh, versus long-term, um, you're able to utilize it and they don't have a ton of overlays that are going to really hold you down. So again, if you don't have the cash flow needed for self-employment or for whatever reason, maybe you have a few and you had to repair them or, uh, and they haven't cash flowed because they weren't rented, whatever the circumstance is, if there's something that hurts you, whether it's short-term or long-term, we're able to utilize these programs for, uh, uh, first time investors. The, the easiest thing, I talk numbers on the front end. 
So any question regarding to rate structure, I mean, I don't have a problem going over that on the front end. Um, the, the best thing is to knock out the pre-approval on the front end. We can have the conversation, but we want to get that application. We want to go ahead and pull credit, just get all the documentation. The sooner that we have all that stuff in our hand, um, we can identify any potential issues. Uh, we just know we're not going to have any surprises. Uh, in my world, I, I try to limit surprises to birthday and Christmas. Uh, I don't want any surprises on mortgages. Uh, once you complete the application, um, that, that'll come over. We'll review everything. If we uh, have the discussion on the front end, we may go ahead and give you uh, the list of all the documentation that we're going to need. Um, if not, the app comes over, we review it, hop on a quick call and then kind of go over the list and then send that out. Once we review everything, um, we're able to determine what's gonna be needed. The loans, really there's, for the actual approval uh, of the file, it's title work, appraisal, and then basically just a signed loan application and an asset. Um, we can do the pre-approval on the front end and then just wait for the property to come under contract. And then we only have a few items that we need to get the final, uh, final approval. Closing process for uh, the InvestorFlex loans is very, very similar to a full doc loan. Uh, once everything is, um, is in, we'll start ordering closing documents. Uh, there's a closing disclosure that goes out with all the fees, shows all the credits, how much cash is due at the day of closing. And uh, there's really not a big difference on uh, the closing process between a full doc and a DSCR loan. It's still the same paperwork that's being signed. So I'm here uh, throughout the entire process. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll speak with the, the borrowers on the front end, and then I've got a lending team of uh, three LOs and some lending assistants um, that help us on the front end. Then I've got an awesome staff on the back end that helps once the property is under contract, um, get across the, uh, the finish line for closing. So looking at the, uh, the plans, we'll just do kind of a quick down and dirty on what they are. So the, the orange option, um, it's one that works for a lot of investors. Um, it, it, it typically offers the lowest rates that we have um, and has a lot of the easiest uh, requirements that we can sidestep. So there's not many things that can snag us on the orange uh, that we need to be mindful for. So just some basics here. There's not a DSCR requirement. There is a minimum loan amount. They do have a three month requirement and they only allow 20 finance properties. If you have uh, a loan amount lower than 75, this one isn't going to work. If you have more than 20 finance properties, you're not able to, to fit in this. So um, those are just a few of the hurdles where if you can't clear them, they're going to prevent you from utilizing the plan for orange. So when you're looking at uh, the the advantages and things to consider on the on the pros and cons, it the, the, the most requirements of the, the middle of the road, um, there's no minimum DSCR. It's really focused on investors, and it doesn't matter if it's a side gig or their main uh, way of uh, doing business is just a full-time real estate investor. Um, it's got something for uh, everybody, un unless you are uh, carrying more than 20 finance properties, you would be disqualified right off the bat. But they allow for larger properties as well as far as acreage. You can do up, go up to 20 acres on orange. So orange wouldn't like me. <laughs> orange would not like you. No, um, we wouldn't look at orange. Um, so orange is a deal killer. If you got too many finance properties, there's just a dead end that you're going to run into um, with orange. Blue is also, you know, heavy investor. The qualifications um, aren't overly complex for blue. The thing with blue is going to have some requirements. So when we're looking at this, it, it has a DSCR of one. It does have a minimum loan amount of 100,000. You got to have 12 months reserves. Uh, uh, it allows up to four finance properties. They don't allow for uh, mortgage lates. Um, there's some first time investor overlays that they have. So Blue is kind of a specialized, they may have a little bit more attractive rate if you fit into this because this one has a very small net. Um, it just, there's a ton of overlays with that. But with that being said, blue is not always the best price. Just for this scenario, these are some of the hurdles that again, that we have to clear. If we know up front we can't clear them or we're not gonna qualify, then that's not a product that we look at. 
So when you're looking uh, again at the blue plan uh, advantages and consideration, um, blue is, is good for people first starting out. Um, if they meet the requirements, they may get some favorable pricing because they don't have a large portfolio. It's more tailored for that. Um, it's going to have good rates due to all the overlays. The process is still streamlined. It's just you got to fit in all the, all the boxes. The, the con on this is obviously if, if you've got more than four finance properties, this one's not going to be for you. Um, if it's a cash out, they have some restrictions on the loan amounts for cash out. Um, and there's LTV overlays on uh, LTV reductions regarding the, the type. So blue is really for that first time investor and uh, they're over the minimum loan amounts in the DSCR. Again, a lot of them may not have a DSCR. So when we're pricing, we're seeing who has the better pricing between them. And if there's a better price DSCR plan that doesn't have uh, a requirement for DSCR, sometimes those have the best rates and we just bypass all the colors and just go to the best price, least restrictions. And the nice thing is when you submit a file, you're going to be able to see the pricing for all of these options and provide what the options are and what the best pricing is. Correct. And we do that on the front end. So it's it's more of like you input your data into a price model and that's going to cover, you know, you input the credit score, the purchase price, the loan to value, the loan amount, the, the zip code, uh, the state, um, how many finance properties you have, how much how much reserves are there. And then you hit price and it scrubs everything and it, it'll let us know what programs qualify. And if reserves, for example, are light, then you're not going to have blue pop up as an option because it's got a 12 month requirement for reserves. Um, so we pick the best priced. And then if there's anything within the, the product highlights that are like just those, you know, I, I say hurdles, you know, we have to clear them. If they're going to trip us up and we can't clear them, then that's not a product that we, we look at. Pink is typically um, a strong one. Uh, you have unlimited properties. So if, if Leah's wanting to do a DSCR, pink is the one that we'd be utilizing because there's not a restriction that you're going to have on the number of finance properties. You mean they don't mind people that have 200 properties? <laughs> nope. And it's funny because you would think it's like, okay, well, you know, there's no limit on finance properties. You would think the reserve requirements would be off the charts, but you only need three month reserve. I'll never, forget. <laughs> I'll never forget when I called you to do my personal home and I told you we have a lot of property. You're like, oh, OK, no big deal. And I sent it over to you. I'll never forget the phone call I got from you and your poor assistant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I remember it's like, no, I don't need tax bills. We'll pull them. And you're like, I've got a team. That that's what they do. Like they have it at their fingertips. So if you want it, just ask and they'll send it. Otherwise, you can go in and look at all of it. I was like, well, if they have it at their fingertips, yeah, go ahead and send what what you have. But yeah, it's it's a mess when you have to go through and you have a ton of properties. Um, we just have to link everything up. To a certain degree, you still have to link up your existing portfolio but you're, you're not dealing with the income requirements or any really LTV or anything like that. So pink is uh, a one DC, DSCR, minimum loan amount of 50, uh, only three months reserves, uh, unlimited number of properties. Um, the DSCR requirement is one and uh, they'll go up to 10 acres. It's, uh, it's pretty cookie cutter. Advantages and consideration. Um, this one is for uh, borrowers who have a very large portfolio, uh, a high uh, amount of finance properties. Um, the qualifications are flexible and uh, they've got some appraisal uh, waiver. A lot of the uh, DSCRs, there's a second uh, uh, appraisal valuation that's done, not necessarily a second appraisal. Um, the, the pink doesn't require a second appraisal or valuation tool for loan amounts less than equal one and a half. Um, investor yellow, um, yellow is awesome. Um, that's typically one of our um, most utilized. Um, it, it, it becomes available with 30% down. It does have the, the limitation on the number of finance properties being at 20, but this one seems to be the best priced um, that pops up of, of all of them. It, it has some of the fewest restrictions and this is why it it ends up being a front runner. The fact that there's not a DSCR requirement or a minimum loan amount, 
it it makes it extremely attractive because right up front you're not going to have to worry about loan amount or any DSCR curveball coming in with the, that number changing and uh, it does have that 20 finance property cap not properties owned just finance properties so they go for the number of finance properties that you have advantages and consideration um, again it you know it it doesn't have the DSCR, so that's probably one of the, the biggest, um, and uh, there's no requirement for loan amount. So uh, this typically has the lowest rates, and um, if you're putting a little bit more than you know, 25 down, 30, 35, 40% down, yellow just becomes a very uh, price aggressive uh, program, and that's the one that we utilize. Um, it does require uh, six months reserves, so it has a little bit higher monthly reserve requirement, there is still a number of uh, finance properties that you can exceed, which is 20. Um, but if you can meet the reserve requirements and finance properties, it ends up being uh, one of the most utilized programs that we take advantage of. And then, and then uh, just kind of looking at the, you know, just the fewest words, orange uh, investors with uh, with experience, blue is ideal for, for those who pursue real estate as a side gig. It's not a full-time business. Um, pink. It's designed uh, for the willing and dealing career investors that are going to have, uh, you know, a lot of properties. And some of those are short terms. Uh, yellow, it's probably the most flexible um, and no nonsense uh, investor is, is who that's going to cater to. So here's all my contact info. Um, you've got my direct line here at the office and my cell phone. Um, if, if I miss you, just leave me a voicemail, shoot me a text. I'll call you back as soon as possible. If I'm in a meeting, I may step out and ask one of my uh, loan officers to reach out and give you a call. Um, but for the most part, you can reach me at the office, um, cell phone or email, just utilize technology to the fullest. Yeah, I, I can't speak highly enough of Willie and his, not only his response time, but the thoroughness of what he does. And don't get overwhelmed when you see some of his spreadsheets he sends you, though. He's like me. He loves to overanalyze everything <laughs> great for you because it really does help you make the best decision. And so you're going to have so much information at your fingertips. And that's one of the things I love about how he and his bank and programs operate. So yeah. I do want to, um, you know, just make sure everyone knows that lending market is changing every day and so what things look like today may not be what it looks like tomorrow or next week overall what we are sending or seeing rather is a trend downward and we've been kind of talking about this summer drop that we're expecting where sometime this summer we're hopeful and anticipating we're going to see the first true rate drop uh, obviously the numbers came in a little stronger than what they were anticipating and so they're saying they're not going to do a drop in spring well none of us were really anticipating a spring drop i think the closer we get to the election, the more pressure there's going to be from both sides um, for this economy to, to start improving. And so at the end of the day, none of us have a crystal ball to know what's coming. But the bottom line is what we do know is it is coming and it is coming, we think, sometime soon. And so we are all working to do whatever we can to secure the real estate opportunities right now while we can before things go crazy and, and we see things go up again. And so really, that's kind of where our mind is, Willie. Anything you want to add to that about kind of what we're seeing with rates and, and what we're expecting over the coming six months? No, I mean, really, uh, uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head. A lot of the analysts, uh, they're forecasting Q3, and really it's just probably centralized around um, the election. Uh, Q3, Q4 is what they're predicting rates to hopefully drop down to upper fives. Uh, that'd be awesome, but really, uh, if, I hate saying it, but it's almost like you want a black swan event to happen here. Um, or abroad, just something that shakes up the market and really drives rates down. Uh, it seems like the mortgage market uh, does pretty well when there's chaos and uncertainty. That is absolutely true. I, I built a huge chunk of my portfolio while COVID was still having everyone locked up. So it's, um, you know, tragedy, unfortunately, can often bring success and, and, and lots of ways to grow and, and financially. So um, it's unfortunate, however, that it, that is kind of the way the world works. But I think that the election is going to provide some of that too, because this is a very contentious election and you've got a lot of um, animosity on both sides about the financial markets. And so I, I cannot even imagine the pressure the Fed is under right now to get the market picked up. 
And I mean, the market's already picking up, right? I mean, housing is at all time highs. You're still seeing this massive housing shortage, low, you know, inventory in terms of, uh, you know, stability for a seller's market versus a buyer's market. Uh, it, nothing makes sense. This, these are the days in the post COVID world where nothing makes sense. And so we're all, I hate to say flying by the seat of our pants, but um, it, it's an educated flight, but that, that truly is the world that we are living in. No, it is. And you just, you know, you wake up every day and if something changes, um, you just kind of grab on and <laughs> go for the ride. Yep. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Well, to wrap up here, I do want to let you guys know we are running a special on our elite membership right now. That is our mentorship program. We've only got a couple spots left. We have an incredible group of people who are highly involved doing all these things we teach. We have a special offer right now for 50% off your first two months. If this is something that you're interested in, please feel free to reach out to the team and they can discuss that further with you. I again want to invite you to join our free Wealth and Rentals Education Group on Facebook. This is 100% uh, free. It is just a lot of investors talking about questions and situations and guiding each other. And of course, Michael and I are in there responding to all questions and constantly bringing you news updates, market updates, and really just a lot of things that are happening in the world that we believe do affect real estate in some inadvertent way, because all the financial markets are interconnected. And so it's important that you monitor all of that. Of course, I spend a huge chunk of my day researching and reading and news stories. And so it's great that you could go onto one Facebook group and see a big culmination of all of that effort and time. I also want to invite you to schedule a consult call. I do these all day, every day. It's a great way to have a transformative conversation after I review a lot of information you send me on the front end of what your situation is, what you're looking to do, and give you guidance on how I would approach that and how I would take you from wherever you are to those next steps of building that big, growing portfolio. So that's a 30-minute call for $125, and that includes all the front end information you send and research I do to prep for those calls as well. Again, I want to invite you to our February 21st webinar with Matthew Icock. We're going to be talking about building strong foundations. And basically the purpose of this webinar is to talk about titling. Do you need to put your property in an LLC? What does that look like? How does it work? What are the different structure options? What are the pros and cons? Amazing webinar. Matthew is a fantastic attorney. His entire focus is real estate. Uh, he's a powerhouse of information. He actually does speak at my live events as well. That's how much I love what he does. And so I think this is going to be a great webinar. Definitely one I recommend you attend. And of course, I want to invite you, follow us on social media. As you guys know, because I talk about it all the time, I'm super active on Facebook, but everything I do on Facebook gets translated to everywhere else as well. Our webinars, all the ones that are open, go on YouTube, podcast, you can listen to them in the car. If you have any questions about where to locate that, you can go to our website, slaughterinvesting.com slash events, or you can email the team at info at slaughterinvesting.com. If you want to go directly to the podcast, you can use this QR code here or you can search for Slaughter Investing on your favorite podcast distribution channel. If you have not joined our texting list, this is a great way to stay up to date of upcoming webinars, reminders, events, all those types of things. You just text JOIN to this number and that will sign you up for our texting list. I promise we don't spam you. We don't use it all that much, but it is a great thing to be a part of. And finally, if you still have questions, you can contact us either by email at info at slaughterinvesting.com, visit our website, or give us a call directly. I thank you so much for watching. Willie, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. I'm so excited for the opportunities of this program, and I look forward to using it for refinances for my own portfolio. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday and have a fantastic weekend. Take care.